Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Pańska, International Nail Artist and Educator here. And today we are going to do this beautiful pink, kind of blush pink and rose gold uh, design. I really enjoy doing this tutorial because uh, uh, that's a beautiful set and it has been inspired by the pillow and the decor and the photo sheet which you have been doing. Uh, so there will be a nice marble uh, technique in this uh, tutorial, but also uh, some painting with the 3D rose and a Swarovski crystals application. I hope you will really enjoy this tutorial. So I have left those two nails for you guys to see it, how this has been created and we will be doing some kind of marble as you can see it, totally inspired by the photo shoot and the pillow covers I have ordered because uh, we have been doing quite a lot of photo shoots but at, um, we're going to do this rose, this one have been done with my left hand so isn't the perfect one but I will show you how to create those kind of design and the marble uh, as well done with the gel polish and then we're going to bling those nails up. So I have um, filed this uh, nail for a prep this nail and then this one is still misshaped and uh, a bit longer because I have been doing a rebalance. So from this nail I have only removed the gel polish. Now because I have been doing a little bit of cooking uh, with the oil I need to clean my nails with the nail dehydrator. And the first step was after removing the gel polish I would just push back my cuticles and then shape the snail so it needs to go shorter so it will be kind of video where I will show you a couple different things so first of all how to do the rebalance and the shaping and then the design as well so when I'm filing for a coffin shape I want to make sure they go nice and straight nice and straight and actually the straight file is really great and you can already see how the shape is start changing we also need to remove quite a lot of bulk of the product uh, for this design because um, we'll be doing the marble with the gel polish and there might be some places where the marble goes a bit thicker so it's good to file it so i'm comparing the length as well And then removing the bulk because uh, if we shorten the nails they become much thicker at the end. So I'm just removing all this bulk. I don't have to remove any product from here because there is no product and we will need to move the apex when we're doing the rebalance. And this set have been done with the new fiber gels and I think it is amazing because it didn't give me uh, as much um, lifting even on the problematic nail which is this one. And because I, might, I want my nails nice and thin I'm still going to taper those side walls a little bit. And then each the surface of the natural nail. So I'm just removing the shine from my natural nail. And then because I was doing a cooking, I'm going to give a little bit of the scratching in there, just so everything is nicely prepped. I can remove the dust from the nails. And use the blue scrap, which is a nail dehydrator. That's the product I'm going to use. And this, uh, doing the prep this way, makes sure my nails last really nice and long time. There is also a tutorial on the channel how these nails have been like removed and prepped for the uh, rebalance. And then I'm using an extra nail prep. Also, all those products are listed in the description of this video as well. And then we're going for the Universal Airbond. So Universal Airbond is a fantastic stuff as well because you don't have to cure it in a lamp and you can use with um, the base for a gel polish. You can use it with the gels and you can use it also with the acrylics as well. 
And then we are going to use those fantastic fiber gel. I love the coverage, but I so I love the fact how they last on the nails. As I say, I'm testing it on the clients as well, but on my nails, the it did last just fantastic. So let me do the rebalance. I'm going to use my gel brush. Just give it a little clean with the UV cleanser in case if there is any dust. And first what I'm doing is I'm taking a small scoop of the product and then just brush it in like a nail polish or a gel on the natural nail. So just brush that in. So first of all, you are going to get a really nice adhesion to the natural nail. And then secondly, this layer of the gel is going to make the next layer of the gel move in much easier on your nails. So once we have done that, we need to move the apex. And you can see the side view that I'm missing my apex here. And same on this nail. So we need to put that back in the place. So I'm picking up another scoop of the product. And my brush is pretty flat. And then just brush that away. Touch up this corner. And you can already see that the apex is looking much better. I've got a wee missing bit of the product just in there. But also I will be filing away this bulk as well because we are going to do the design which will be filed after we apply the gel polish. So I want them to be a bit thinner than I would do them normally. So I'm getting, I hardly touch my gel. Uh, this is a pretty uncomfy position because normally I, I get the gravity to do the job for me as well. Like my fingers are much more down the way. So the gravity can help me. There we are and they're ready to cook. So I'm going to give it a 60 seconds cure. Uh, those gels will be in the description of the video as well. Um, they are getting a little bit warm in the lamp, but depending on the thickness. So I have applied pretty thin and I'm okay, I can keep it in. But if you would build like a much uh, higher apex, much more product on, your client will need to take out the hand for a one second, like put hand inside for one second, take it out for one second, play with it like maybe two, three times, and then they are okay to keep the hand inside. And after we cure this nail, we can shape it. So it is not going to be a big shaping because we have already done uh, most of it. And in the meantime, I'm going to prepare the mixture of the colors, which we are going to need for the marble effect. So that's the marble effect we are going to create. And I show you how to prepare this mixture. I've got exactly the same uh, coffee holder. Um, which is awesome. So I'm going to use some upvoted uh, gel polishes and the white one is amazing, like has really nice coverage. So there's a sweet side 155, one of my favorite ones, and a little bit of the 146. Also, we are going to need some top coat and I've got some old no wipe top coat, which I'm going to use. So first what I'm doing is I'm putting on my palette a tiny bit of the top coat. Then a drop of this gel polish. There is the um, same tutorial which I have done like ages ago on the geode nail, like a stone nail, and that's the same kind of technique I'm using here. And then again a drop of the top coat, then a drop of this color, maybe a smaller one. A drop of this one again. Drop of white, drop of top coat, another very tiny one because this color is very highly pigmented. This one and the white. So I've got this mixture here on the side and I can leave it on the side so that will nicely spread so this way we will achieve much better. Um, much better mar marble. So I'm putting it on the side so the dust doesn't get in there. And I need to remove the inhibition layer from the gel. So I'm just removing the inhibition layer 
and I'm going to quickly shape the needle. So I will show you on this one and then shape this one on my own. So nice and straight, nice and straight. So basically, if you would have two files, the coffin shape like it will eventually meet into the point. So I'm just touching up the sides. And then once I have done the sides, I need to bring the product like up the way. So I'm just filing those kind of way. Like you can see where I'm creating the scratches. I will show you that. That's the best way to shape the coffin. So I'm just doing a scratches on this side, exactly the same on the other side. And this way I'm removing all the bulk, uh, bulk of the product from the sides. Once I have done this, I can go around the cuticle because I want my product to be nicely blended so there is nothing to catch, like absolutely nothing. It has to be blended in like a tip to the natural nail. And then after we have done this filing, we need to smooth out the nail. So smoothing out the nail is a nice and straight movement of the file, just like this. And you can see also, I'm not touching my apex area uh, because that's the highest point of the nail. I'm just removing the smoothing out and removing the bulk of the product. And basically that's my filing done. Now I just have to smooth it with the buffer, which I've got in here. Again, I'm not bothered too much about making it perfect nail because we are going to apply the gel polish in a marble uh, way, which is going to be a little bit, oh, see, this needs to be blended, uh, which is going to be a little bit uh, bulkier. So we will have to buff it uh, after we finish this part. So I'm not bothered too much at this stage. So just a little bit of buff, remove the dust, and I'm going to do that on the other nail as well and be back with you. So that's them all nicely buff. And I'm just going to do a little bit of the cuticle work. Not much in there. And I'm using my portable e-file. It's pretty amazing because you don't need like a cable. And that is pretty awesome. So just a little bit and pieces. My cuticles are pretty good. And I don't do excessive work on it. So just really the biggest dry parts. And that's basically done. So I can clean away all the dust and uh, any bits and pieces, use the nail dehydrator again, and then we can move on into the marble. I'm just cleaning my nail. And I'm really glad we've got those fiber gels because uh, of those special fibers, we can build up a much thinner nail enhancements. And I don't like too thick and ugly bulky nails. <laughs> so you can see my marble spread really nice on its own. And basically what I'm going to do is just like with this uh, messy ombre brush, I'm just going to pick up a tiny bit of it. And the marble is going to go in the middle. So what I'm doing is I'm just going into different kind of waves, picking up another scoop and going into another waves. Don't go too close to the edges because it's a bit runny. We're going to leave the edges at the end. It's nice and marbly. Okay, I'm not going to apply it to the edges because the product might run to the sides, to the cuticles. And here I have created my own mix because the pillow was in a rose gold and I didn't have the rose gold gel. So what I did is I used some astonishing impression gel paste and it's a pretty yellow color. You can see it, the color of it here. So it's nothing as those rose gold. And I thought I want a rose gold to go with my gems. So what I have done is I had add to this paste a drop of the metal manix indigo and i have added a drop of some pigment in pink i'll show you this 
So this one was pink and this one kind of silver color. So it's a two chromes. And this one. Actually, I might quickly... No, I'm not going to do the mix because my product is going to run. So I have added a drop of this and a drop of this and the drop of the base, uh, soak of base gel uh, into this uh, paste to create my rose gold color, which is amazing. Now we are going to use the micro styler brush number four zero. And what I'm going to do is I will pick up a tiny drops of this uh, color and just go around the cuticle area, nice and thin. Just because with the large brush, you cannot be precise. So I'm peeling always the new folds down. And with this small brush, I'm just finishing off the edges. You kind of work really messy on it. There we are. And then the next step is to go into the paste which we have created with the drop of the top coat. So I've got drop of the top coat in here. And I'm just picking up a little bit of this paste. Mix it on the side in here with my top coat. There was quite a lot of rose gold on the pillow, but I did want only a little bit. And what I'm doing is like very thin lines very irregular just to give a little bit of those gold into my needle so basically i'm searching for the ugly places <laughs> and uh, this way they will be nicer because uh, at the same time i'm kind of mixing the marble And a drop more in here. Ah, never too much gold. Eh? And after I have finished this, I can give it a cure. So I'm going to give it a cure. Uh, but I will do it only a flash cure, uh, which is not a full cure uh, to save you a time because we have to also paint the background for our rose. So I want the rose to be in this beautiful 155 color, the background for it. And that's what is going to go into this new. I'm just cleaning from all these chromes. Push back the cuticles. Again, we can use a smaller brush to go very close to the cuticle, but I'm not bothered because the crystals are coming in there. Oh, come on. Okay, so I've got one layer of this color. I don't need two layers because we are going to paint the rose on top of it. And for painting my rose, I'm going to use the same colors. So I've got the darker one. Actually, this color is really amazing. It's 146 ice cream. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Then I need this lighter one. I need a bit of white one. And we are going to also need a drop of the paint on French gel. I'm just going to open it up. And put a scope of the paint on French gel. That's as great. So I'm going to clean my brush. And now I can... In the middle, we want to go darker. So I'm just going to draw the middle of the rose. Just like kind of messy way. Then I'm adding a drop of this lighter color into it and I'm going with the lighter color.
I'm adding another drops of the white and the mix which I have used for the marbles. And you can see already looks like a kind of flower-ish. So another petal there. This is kind of really messy. <laughs> a splash of the color, I would call it. Yeah, I'm happy with my artistic mess. I can give it a cure. <laughs> and um, now I've got the paint on French gel, which is a little bit uh, more pigmented. Uh, so this way I will be able to fade a little bit better. I can add a drop of the top coat on the side in here for my painting as well. And there we are. We can move on into the next stage. So I'm dipping in my brush into the white and I'm going to paint the middle of the rose. It is kind of like a whist swirl. And then I'm start fading my whist, my swirl. So lots of lots of very small brush strokes. Don't go too regular with the shape, kind of go a little bit wiggle. And then fade that away. For fading, I'm dripping in my brush in a tiny bit of the top coat. And I keep fading. You can go for a lazy option and just do white lines. It will look fine as well. I don't want lazy option. Okay, I can move on into the next petal. And what is fantastic about it? Because we have created all these different backgrounds, it looks really nice. Like lots of different colors. And I'm fading another color. Yeah, I've created two petals. Now I can go and do another one in here. Also, if you have noticed, I'm kind of fading everything outside. So my sharp, sharp line is inside and I'm fading outside. So it is not just like anywhere, it's just <laughs> the places which are going outside, so the inside is darker. Again, dripping in my brush in the top coat and fade that in. And the more outside we go, sorry guys, I have to go. Perfect. <laughs> I have to go this way. And since I'm in this position, I will do another petal right on the top and here. So the cameraman doesn't have to run behind me. And 
and I'm just fading it in. Okay, I'm turning my hand back into the previous position. Now I need a larger petal here. And again, I'm fading. It is not one stroke, it's just a gel painting. One stroke roses looks different, but I love one stroke technique as well. It's definitely one of the most difficult techniques to learn. And actually watching the tutorials on the YouTube aren't a great way to learn one stroke because it's very tricky. And it gives the fake illusion um, when you're watching the tutorials. Okay, so we have created the petals which was faded outside and darker inside. Now we are going to swap. So this petal is going to be lighter outside. And now I'm going to fade it. The top pot is fantastic for fading. I have added a drop of the French gel as well, just to get it whiter in here. Now the top coat again. Fade that in. And we've got another petal. Same on the top, very irregular one. And again, I'm fading inside. Sorry, again, swapping the position of the hand. Fading inside. At this stage, I'm going to give it like a two second slash cure just so I can freeze all my product. Also, by the way, thank you so much again, like for all the followers and new subscribers, shares, likes and comments, because we are almost at the 20,000. Uh, and that's a pretty nice achievement because uh, we reactivate this channel in April-ish and uh, that's like 10,000 subscribers since then. <laughs> thank you so much. So yeah, almost 20,000 in total, which is fantastic. So that's it, flash cure. And another petal. Now this one needs to come up like here. And then this one like this. Just so they are irregular. Just going to take a fresh wipe. Brush going into the top coat. And fade this nice. Right, that nice. So now we can compare the rows which I have done with my left hand to the one which I'm doing now. Oh my goodness, that's a difference, I think. But um, as a challenge, I'm definitely going to practice my skills left hand painting. <laughs> And again, fade that in. We also have to do those caviar beads and those beautiful Swarovski crystals. I think that's enough. That's another petal there. Perfect. I'm going to give it two seconds flash cure. Check for any missing places. So I'm checking my marble. If I would be really fussy, I could add a drop of the product here with the small brush. Actually, I will do it in case if you don't apply the crystals. So you would go just like this to fill up those way missing corner. And I'm going to do a little bit more fading on my rows. So lots of top coat in, hardly any white product. You can see it there. Just to fade that in. Like make sure you also fade into the one direction so it's not messy. 
So we want to fade in into one direction. Kind of show the curvatures of the petals. And I need to tidy up this place here. So it's nicer. So more top coating. And fade that in. Okay, that's the fading finish and now I'm just dropping a tiny bit of this darker color because I'm going closer to the inside. Touching up this place here. Perfect, I can give it a cure, a final cure. So this is going to be a 30 seconds cure. Nice 30 seconds cure. Then we apply the top coat and we are going to buff the snails. And the reason I want to buff it is when we're picking up those marbles, like there are some places where it's a little bit thicker and some places where it's a little bit thinner. So I want to smooth that out. And then also I need the rough surface for my crystals to stick in. So I'm kind of like would do that anyway. And um, for the rules, we are going to also use acrylic paint to make it even more realistic. And I show you that. So I'm just going to clean that out from here. Apply the top coat. So I'm applying the High Shine No Wipe Top Gel. Just applying this top coat in. It's a pretty decent amount of the top coat. And give it a cure. I will be also using the acrylic paints and this one is in white color for finishing of the detail on the rose. They fab for one stroke as well and any kind of freehand painting. So I'm just squeezing a tiny bit of this paint. This is if you don't clean the paint straight away after you use it. <laughs> You need to have both hands to squeeze it. Or that's the end of the paint. Yeah, that's almost the end of the paint. So I've got my paint in here. And for painting uh, with acrylic paints, I quite like my painting fine liner brush. It is uh, more natural hairs, Akolinsky hairs. This one is really wrecked, but I'm going to use it still. So you can see it's kind of misshaped and ugly. Just because I didn't respect it after the painting. So I need to prepare my brush to be nice again. What I'm doing is I'm rolling my brush into a nice point. So each time when you've got messy hairs, you want to get your brush to behave again. You start painting a really nice fine lines. <laughs> Okay, so that's it already. I can buff my nails. So I'm just quickly going with the buffer. Now I can remove the dust. Tiny bit of the blue scrap to clean the nails and we can move on into the next part. So I've got my white acrylic paint and my messy brush. I need to actually get the new one because this one is well overused. Getting into the nice fine point. And we are going to define this rose. It's 
See, I think I cannot paint so thin lines with uh, gel like I can do with the acrylic paints. Because with the acrylic paints I can paint mi microscopic stuff. <laughs> I'm not sure if the camera can actually see it. <laughs> and I can prolong some of those petals, leaving an extra ones. My brush is broken at the tip, you can probably see it. Oh, he zoomed it in so much. Thanks, cameraman. <laughs> Sorry, I will laugh at it. Yeah, it is a huge zoom. I think the camera see it better now than my eyes does. So I need to twist this hand. I know the zoom is so extreme. To prolong some of the petals. So here I'm going to paint an extra one which didn't exist. Sorry guys, I'm going to fix this brush as well and we're going to go back to this detail work. And another one which didn't exist. Don't outline everything, every single part, because then it will look really fake. Uh, you want to only highlight some places. So here thicker and then thinner. That's kind of sharpen up this rose. You can see I've got hardly any paint on my brush. So there is also like a wee tiny wee blob at the end of it. That's the single hair which I have broke. So normally I've got this um, hair really, really sharp. And I would do most of my painting with those kind of single hair. I'm talking about like faces, horses, <laughs> eyelashes and like really extreme stuff. But I don't, I'm not sure would I be able to do the tutorial on those kind of advanced work just because uh, of the position of the hand, maybe. You probably don't see half of the stuff I'm doing. But we'll see, maybe someday like I will find a way to show you like more and more advanced stuff. But then it will be more for kind of competition. I don't think so. You would spend uh, this amount of time of the, the client's news. Okay, we've got some mistake here. So for mistakes, you can take a wee wipe or a clean brush 
with a tiny bit of the blue scrap and then I would just wipe it off. So I've got the mistaken here. I've been crazy, like if I was taking a part in the competition, you know, I can clean it up. You know, guys, what I was doing when I was painting, I was um, taking a picture of the work I have painted and then I was zooming it in so much that I could see the mistake which a human eye cannot see it. And then I was correcting those mistakes um, in the real life. Ta -da! Okay, so that's my rose is finished. <laughs> that's enough. And I need to also stick in some crystals uh, on top of it. So I'm going to use the brush on glue for the crystals. Oh, yeah, and now compare these roses. Yeah, there is a little difference. <laughs> one is dead and one is alive. <laughs> and the crystals I'm going to use, that's the Swarovski crystals in rose gold and I love them again so my hand don't shake because normally I've got a really good hand support so we are going to do some nice design in the middle finger and I think I, I do really love the one on the farm so I think I will show you guys so I'm just applying a drop of the glue and apply it on also, I need the two smaller ones on the side. And another one. A drop of glue. Like, don't put too much glue on the one time. Like, you don't want that to dry out because then you've got a glue marks and that doesn't look nice. I'm searching for a tiniest crystal ever before they dry. That's too late now. I'm bet they dry. Let me check. Maybe they didn't. One of them did. Okay. See, taking too long because you've got only a couple seconds to move those crystals. Okay, that's a nice shape. Now we can place a larger crystal. And for large crystals, I place them in and then I use my finger to kind of make sure they are in the right place. Because we have to put much more glue, it takes ages for this glue to dry. So we've got a long time to move it. Now I need to twist my hand on the other way just to check if they straight okay and then I can go back into this position another large crystal I quite like those square ones. I was really fancy the rose gold crystals on my nails, but I just didn't know it what color to choose for it. And then this pillow and the photo shoot, I was like, yeah, that's what I want. Like, so now the tiny crystal here. And that's it. 
So I've got the crystals on and the next step will be to put the caviar beads. But for caviar beads you have to be really patient and we have to wait for the glue to set because we have to go with a small brush and the top coat around it and uh, some base gel. So on the side I'm going to put the base gel. That's the so-called base gel I'm using. So a tiny bit of it on the side and also in a later on we are going to need the tiny bit of the top coat as well so I'm just putting ah uh, so I'm just putting tiny bit of the top coat on one side and tiny bit of the base on the other side left as base right as top coat <laughs> okay I will top coat the rose to show you the final look on the rose because uh, the top coat is going to bring everything to the life Actually, I should put some crystals over it as well, right on the top. Yeah, I'm going to do it now. Actually, I will test it how they last as well. Because normally I use the glue, so you guys remember, you the witness as well. That's, I'm going to put a tiny bit of the base gel, which is on the left, mixed with the top coat. To stick in a couple crystals and if they last I might swap for that because then I've got more time to move the crystals about than I do with the glue but so far glue have been like amazing and it lasting me ages I can give it a cure so a couple seconds cure to flush the product and stop running and then we can do the caviar beads so the caviar beads I'm going to use that's the rose gold ones and I think I have been inspired by the previous video okay so that's them open there we are easier than me trying to play with the one hand <laughs> And I can do this caviar beads design. So again, I'm just securing my hand so it doesn't shake. Then dip it in my brush in a base gel, so-called base gel. And we are going to apply those caviar beads. So drop in here, drop in there, drop in there, drop in there. And then all the way around the crystal. All the way around the crystal. Don't put too much because uh, you don't want the bulk of the product in there. And I'm, I'm just picking up the bits. You have to really wait for the glue to dry, otherwise you will wreck your brush. I think it will also look fantastic in a ring shape, like a wedding ring or something, with all those crystal beads and then wee diamonds in the middle. Olivia is singing upstairs. She played the guitar, we can hear her. I don't think so, you can hear it, guys, but yeah, she plays guitar. She self-learned like how to play the guitar, how to play the keyboard.
I think that's all the caviar bits almost uh, placed. I was so tempted to twist my hand again into my direction so I could see the other side better. But I thought, no, guys, I'm just going to keep this view better for you. And please, 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 I know like those type of tutorials are better because they are so nice close-ups and everything. But I want you, if you didn't see it, they are some tutorials from the salon. And I know they are a kind of crap quality, the way like I have no cameraman and I'm doing it on my own at the same time when I'm doing a client and like managing the salon. But if they are still kind of valuable for you, if you still like to watch them, please let me know uh, because uh, that's mean I could do more tutorials. Uh, even if they are maybe not the best quality, the ones from the salon, but it's a different type of work, like something which we are doing every day for the clients, really. And I think they are kind of useful. So let me know. Because I was a bit embarrassed, Patrick says, like to me, when, because he editing all the videos and he says to me, like, are you crazy? I'm not going to edit that. That's just so rubbish, like tutorial. Like, you can't see anything in there. And. And the light is bad and you out of focus but then i think like there is still quite a lot of useful information in there anyway this one is finished i'm going to give it a cure and then apply the top coat around it so everything stays on for many many weeks and you will guys check with me how many weeks because i usually do the tutorial so you can see how many times like i've got those nails and what is a growth on them so we have used the fiber gel in today and i'm i'm kind of like more and more in love with this product so if it's last me again and like and then on the clients which i have tested the ones which usually get a wee lifting on a the corner there and there um and they don't break any even if they thinner that's mean it's a perfect solution for me so no wipe top coat around the crystals and this is the last step that's the last step you make sure everything is lasting well Hit the share button because I think this set is really beautiful. I'm actually showing you the pillow which did inspire me. Oh, it's on my phone. Okay, I don't show you the pillow. You will be able to see it in some photo shoots as well when it's arrived. Yeah, but that's the set finished. And I love this hand, like compared to this hand, uh, much, much nicer. But let me cure this nail. You've got some time to hit the share button now as well. <laughs> and that's it the product is freezed so i can show you so i can show you now this beautiful set thank you so much i i really love this hand like this one is so rubbish now but yeah i like this one thank you so much guys for being with me during this uh, pretty long tutorial <laughs> bye now